on a scale of how quickly it can get to your get into circulation. Things with higher fiber have a lower glycemic index and they will take a little bit longer. Then if you eat them with a bunch of fat, that will slow down the mm -hmm. emptying of your stomach of those carbohydrates because the fat takes so long to leave your stomach. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just depends on the type of carbohydrate. If it's a more uh, glucose based carbohydrate like maltodextrin and rice in itself, they go straight into circulation, but other ones like fructose that goes through your liver first and then gets out into circulation. So it takes a little bit longer. However, your liver stores of glycogen are also of great importance when you're cycling or when, oh, when for everybody, right? Not just for cyclists, but when you're finished your store, um, your liver glycogen, it can only store about 40 grams of carbohydrate. And if it's depleted at the end of a ride, and then you don't replete it specifically with fructose based carbohydrate, then later in the day, you're basically going to be on this big mass of sugar spikes and curves and oh, dips and everything. And it's just, it's just car crashes. But uh, so that's why containing our fructose containing carbohydrates after the ride are also very important and before. So, okay. I love nutrition because that was so many nuances to like, well, the glycemic index matters and is there fat and is there this and if it's fructose and if it's glucose it's like dude i'm just in the line at chipotle like i just crush this ride what do i order and so let's make a takeaway rider crushes i think we've established if you're doing an endurance ride you know moderate amount of carbs you don't have to do overkill and if you deplete them that's fine just don't you know think of the next ride also and then what about for a race what's like let's give a takeaway of like how What's an actionable item that someone that listens to this? Because I think we're that your knowledge that was so detailed and on point. But mm -hmm. most listeners are going to be like, "Wait, what is she?" Doing? Like everyone's the head explosion emoji was just like, "Holy crap!" I mean, I yeah, feel see, like this is why it takes three months for me to work with an athlete. A hundred percent. I mean, I'll even talk to Landry and I, and and we'll talk about the glycemic index. I'm like, wait, but I put honey on this. Maybe I should be using um. God, what's it's not hemp Maple it's, syrup. no i drink that on the bike instead of gel oh dear um oh my god i use it this morning it's the brown liquid uh not the cacti but agave agave thank you <laughs> i'm surprised <laughs> i knew that one and it was just like all from glycemic index stuff and it's like oh my god this is like we could go down the rabbit hole but i think would when you were talking about the rice being higher glycemic index, that's good though, post ride, big mega ride, right? Okay. And is that why cereal, which is mostly sugar, is okay post ride, but don't eat that when you're sitting around on Monday morning? Is that well, correct? Well, you can't really call it sugar because sometimes it's sugar implies that it might be sucrose, which it's not. Uh, it's again more maltodextrin based say for example cocoa pops are anyway if it's got if honey nut cornflakes probably have more fructose and isn't it just table carbohydrate. so what is so, table sugar table sugar uh, is table sugar is sucrose but it's it's um it's basically simplified uh glucose and fructose it's okay. a one-to-one -one ratio Mm -hmm. your priority is really glucose because it's just so fast right mm -hmm. so but obviously you don't talk to people in glucose terms you talk to them in food terms right do you and think cereal's bad is cereal, should, no no have... cereal's perfect this is it because it's more post ride or all the time oh all the time <laughs> really no no post post ride okay because it is such a fast release carbohydrate right and it will go into circulation and into the working muscle or into the worked muscle because now I've just heard a lot more people talking about, well, if I'm eating sugar, then I'm blunting fat burning. And that's a negative, obviously. No, me. that's pre-ride. Okay. Okay. Now that's a different kettle of fish. Really so, say, so just so I'm sure, save the cereal for post-ride. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Or things like Haribo, right? You see, like there was a really great video of one of the really tall guys, Hugo Carthy, Hugo Carthy, and he writes for EF, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely shoveling in handfuls of Haribo after one of the stages. Yeah. Uh, or was that one of the classic races? I don't know. But like those guys, their nutritionists will literally walk around with basically bags, suitcases of Haribo because it's just such a, 
a uh, quick release carbohydrate and for recovery it's perfect and contains fructose as well so mm -hmm. i don't know what the ratio is don't ask me that but uh in terms of recovery it's pretty good now is there a point where you're eating too much haribo and like you said that sugar is getting converted to fat because like how much haribo is too much haribo well it's almost gram for gram uh, carbohydrate so 50 say 60 grams of haribo is yeah. 50 grams of carbohydrate right but so i mean like can so that could, be 70, your, that could be one of your hours so okay that's one hour i mean i could sit i could crush 250 grams after a ride that's probably too yeah, much of course you could yeah but you, that's why you need a plan for these things right right so i'm saying <laughs> that's too much don't eat the whole bag yeah yeah yeah